All right, let's go ahead and do the, let's make sure the properties are still set up. Pro set up. Okay, so let's do the trace import. Uh, the way the trace import works is we're going to select the boards and select the XML data identifier. We're going to do a discretization of a 200 by 200 grid on the initial data. It's going to map, we'll calculate the amount of uh, copper versus FR4 on each location on the grid, then it's going to map that data on the on my mesh. So the result will be uh, our board will be meshed layer by layer, and for each element on each layer, we will know how much copper versus FR4 there are, and that's going to allow us to specify the um, to that's going to allow ANSYS to automatically calculate a uh, equivalent thermal conductivity, thermal expansion coefficient, and stiffness, orthotropic stiffness values. Okay, once the trace mapping is completed, we can assign the trace material, in this case copper. I'm going to assign it to one layer, and then copy this to the rest of the layers. On the worksheet, we can also specify the plating material for the vias, whether it's filled or hollow vias, whether there's a different fill diameter. So this information is all gathered from the ECAT data. So copy this as well. I'm going to show everything. all 200 vias or 114 vias here. Paste that in. Okay, that's all set up. So now we can import the traces. And here we have the trace, traces mapped onto the mesh. You can see the red areas that are areas of high copper concentration. Blue areas are where there isn't very little copper. Next step is we want to check the contacts. There are many parts and many components in this model. So for the contact settings, we use a tolerance-based checker to detect where the contacts are. The crosshair, the circle in the Inside my cursor is the contact detect re detection region. So ANSYS should try to detect parts that are close enough together within the detection region. I'm going to change to group, the group by option from bodies to part. This will reduce the number of contact pairs they have to check through. And right click here, click create automatic contacts. ANSYS goes through the entire model to try to detect the contacts. As previously mentioned, I've there is a small gap between the chip here and the PCB, so I'm going to look to see if ANSYS managed to find a contact between the two. It did not, so let's uh, define the contact manually. We'll have a bonded contact there. In addition, I made some changes. I simplified the model around these connectors, so let's see if there is a contact between these two bodies. These two bodies are not connected either. The gap was perhaps a little too big. So again, I'll select the two surfaces here, bond them together. This connector was also simplified. So let's select these two surfaces. That one also did not create a contact. Again, we'll do this manually. All the other parts seem to have contact screen for them. For example, if I select this, right, this finds a contact between the PCB and this body. And the last one is this connector and the PCB. Okay, nothing there either, so let's do this by hand. OK, 
Okay, now that we've created a number of contacts, see there's this one, this one, this one, this one. And I think maybe this one was cleaned up as well. Okay, so I need to define this contact. Bottom of the face to the top surface. Okay, we'll select all of these contacts and adjust the pinball radius to give it a larger radius. There could be a small gap between them. So we're going to assign a one millimeter pinball radius. This will ensure that elements within a millimeter of each other will have contact defined. Once that's done, we can begin our simulation. This will be a warpage analysis. We're modeling the, pro the creation of this board by putting it through a soldering oven. Uh, a solder reflow oven. So we want to start with a environment temperature of 180 degrees Celsius and we're going to cool this assembly down to uh, by assigning a thermal condition down to room temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. In terms of setting up a, a warpage analysis we want this assembly to be relatively unconstrained so I'm going to use weak springs to stabilize the problem. If the deflections are small, the weak springs apply some minimum amount of force on the structure, um, and that should be sufficient to stabilize warpage analysis like this. And I want to ensure that I'm using the direct solver so that the simulation uh, completes quickly. And that should be it. So we have the mesh contacts defined, as well as all the material properties set. Let's look at a few parts here. We can see that they are properly defined. Um, we have the traces imported, so we represent the PCB accurately. And lastly, uh, we have the boundary condition and supports defined. So let's go ahead and solve the simulation. So now the simulation is completed, we can take a look at the deformation. This is a picture of the PCB assembly once it goes through solder reflow. We can look at things like uh, the warpage of individual components. For example, maybe taking a look at the deformation here, you can see that this component spans quite a few different contour bands, whereas this one may be more of a rigid body motion. So, you can create a construction geometry and create a path. size of this package. And plot the deformation. On the path we just created. Shows that this particular package has, has deformed from one point, have uh, deformed to a maximum of 1.3 millimeters, and the minimum deformation is 0.2 millimeters. We can also look at things like contact pressure and stresses. So we have 95, 215, and the first of the extruded ones. Okay. Yeah.
So the pressure here, positive is in compression, negative is in tension. So we can set this to zero. So we're looking for those areas where there's the largest amount of tension. You can probably, you should probably switch because the side of the contact, but this gives you an idea that roughly this element, this particular chip should, is in more larger amount of tension, which could put more stress on the package. Uh, we can then do a sub-model of this area to try to refine it and better understand uh, how the interaction of uh, the warpage of the board, uh, how the warpage of the board interacts with the chip and whether this is an area that we need to be concerned about. And that's the demonstration of board warpage, PCB board warpage, using Ansys Mechanical and TraceMap. Thank you.